How's it going tonight, guys? Hey. Great. So we're checking out 30XX, which is a Mega Man-inspired roguelike. Pretty sure it's 30XDX. Sure. XDX. I mean, you can already see here, like, the character, at least the, the oh, male character zero. here. It looks exactly like Zero, right? Like, it's Mega Man X. Um, oh, man. Is it always this zoomed out? Yes. That is yeah. not good for a Mega Man style game, in my opinion. I, actually, not change I actually kind of agree with that. <laughs> Get me a little bit closer to the actual out. I've been playing Mega Man games for a long time. I mean, you've sat with me while I beat Mega Man X in like two hours. This yeah. is just going to be hard to get used to, or I'm going to have to play it sitting very close to my device. Yeah, this would be pretty dangerous on a small screen, too. Uh, the other thing I found really weird is, uh, so I had to play this with an Xbox controller. I tried to play it with the PlayStation 1, and it just would not let me adjust the controls. But at least on Xbox, I was able to adjust the controls. It's not a early access or anything, right? Like it's, nope. it's full, a 1.0? Full release. Oh, yeah. Yep. And um, like you can see here, I'm playing as the other character, uh, yeah. the girl, but more Mega Man inspired. Seriously looks like female Mega Man. Exactly. And um, it the the tiles change, right? So like it's all completely random. There it's is... There's some overlap between like types of enemies and, and some of the stuff, and you're going to see some repeat if you play it enough, but uh, there's there's a decent amount of variety. Um, you do also get kind of like power-ups throughout the levels, and they uh, will only last for like that round. Uh, some of them are really weird, like you can just get like extra hit points or uh, extra damage and stuff. Not all of them are going to be like very, very interesting, you know? Okay, so... I think it's in, impossible to avoid the Mega Man comparisons. So I'm just going to ask, is there any sort of equivalent with this being a roguelike to boss weapons that you would have? Like, one of the best parts was getting a new weapon, seeing how it works, and figuring out which other boss is vulnerable to it. Yes, when you kill a boss, they drop, like, a chest, and the chest will have, like, the boss weapon or a couple of alternatives of boss weapons and then some random stuff. So if you don't want that particular weapon, you could get like health up or are there, damage are there, up. Are there any areas in the game that like, you come across maybe like a chest room or something like that? Yep. Stuff, but you can only get into it if you have like a specific weapon? No, I haven't run into anything okay. like that. Um, it's, and in fact, uh, I will say, I the levels are, are kind of weird. They're not as linear as, uh, as I, I would have thought for like a Mega Man game. You know, there is kind of like a set path, but in, in some areas it gets a little bit open and you're kind of like, I'm not sure where exactly I'm supposed to be going. Um, so, at least comparing to Mega Man, I, I do think it is an inferior product, you know, like I would prefer to play Mega Man. Well, it's, it's definitely going to be very different because of the roguelike stuff, that it can't be crafted in the same way for sure. But it does look pretty cool. It's like a mini, mini uh, mid boss, I think it was. Yeah, yeah, and those end up kind of randomized too, so there's going to be like set patterns, but you will kind of run into some of the same stuff over and over again. So one of the biggest things that is necessary for a Mega Man game to be successful, in my opinion, is the handling, the controls. Because mm -hmm. you want to be platforming, shooting. How responsive is this game? It's responsive. I didn't like the the layout, which is why I had to change it. Because the layout was like, we made this layout for, <laughs> for a Mega Man game. But if you can like, change it, that's... Yeah, and, and as soon as I was able to figure out how to change it and stuff like that, it was fine. Um, and it is it is responsive. Like, I didn't have too much yeah, trouble. Yeah, my biggest that. concern is stuff like, how well can you do a wall, like a dash jump off a wall? Stuff like that. Yeah, like you can double tap forward to dash, or you can hit like a, a button that you assign for dash. So yeah. it's really, you know, it's up to you how you want to set that up. And it, it, I didn't find it too, too bad. I had a little bit of difficulty in the beginning, but I think I, it was more because I was trying to use the PlayStation controller and it just wouldn't let me edit it. Yeah. But. Is there any sort of overarching story with it being a roguelike, or is it kind of... There's like a home base. I, I didn't really catch much of the story, or understand much of the story. It was very much like, bad guys, go fight bad guys, go into the portal. Yeah. I mean, Mega Man X didn't really have much of the story. 
And there are some, like, permanent type upgrades that you can get, which will, like, open up unlocks. Like, oh, you unlock this weapon, it'll appear in, you know, the boss pool and stuff like that, so. Is that the only type of permanent progression? Because I know with roguelikes, that can be hit or miss, right? Yeah, it's it seems very pure roguelike, so you don't get, like, like something that's going to make you where you're thing? permanently better. Okay. Yeah. Oh, so it just adds things to the pool? Yep. Uh, I'm not a fan of that. <laughs> well, no, because you want to feel like you can get a little bit of progression. Right, Outside right, right. of just getting better yourself. And I think that that's a fine balance for roguelikes. And just having ones where it's like, Oh, you've unlocked this weapon. But it's only you've unlocked it to potentially drop out of this boss pool. It's like, cool, so I may not see it for a while, yeah. and yeah. if I yeah. do, it might not even be can, when I need it. I think the closest you get is you get like you can get like a starter weapon, but again, it's not like the biggest deal. Yeah. Okay. But yeah, so that's pretty much where we're at. Um, what do you guys think? Would this be a, a continue to play, or is it uh, gone after the first visit? I, I don't think I'd play it too much. I think it looks like a pretty cool game, but I, I think the biggest thing that would get me is I like rogue, I like the progression of roguelikes, sure. where you keep adding more and more and more. You get stronger, it. right? Yeah. Once I re reach the end of that progression path, I'm usually done with the game. And if it's a game that doesn't happen at all, I might play a couple rounds, but then I'm just like, okay, I'm done. What about yourself? I think for me, it really depends on feel more than anything. Um, like Alex said, if if it doesn't have a progression path for me, I'll lose interest after a little while. So at least if there's a start and a finish, like a set final boss, a little bit of a story, then yeah, I would continue playing it. But if that's not the case, I would probably do a couple runs and then just turn it off because I would feel like, well, you know, what am I doing with my time if I'm not making any progress? Yep. And that's pretty much the same way that I felt is like I felt like I was starting from scratch so I only played a few rounds to basically get the footage and then I was definitely 